You know what I mean? Like, I love doing this. Yeah. You know? Yes, it feels so good, right? It feels... Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, that sounded really bad but it's not what you think. I'm talking about painting and how good it feels to live an authentic life. In this video for noelleclark.com, I sat down with portrait artist Lorenzo P of Lorenzo P Photography and Kyle Kostick, father, author, cancer survivor turned medical marijuana advocate. Join me, Noelle Clark, as we explore the idea of spirited solitude. So, okay, so when I initially set this up for noelleclark.com. Um, nice plug. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, don't look in the camera. Uh, Only when we say noelleclark.com. Uh, <laughs> um, no, so when I initially set it up, what I wanted to do was talk about self-imposed isolation, or I called it spirited solitude, just mm, to give it a more yes. friendly, uplifting yes. connotation, and how removing ourselves from certain situations or habits can bring a level of peace that maybe we didn't even know existed or awaken a passion in us we didn't mm. know mm -hmm. existed. Oh, I had my cancer. Uh -huh. um, and I have a psychology degree. And I learned that psychosomatic symptoms develop into physical symptoms. So what happened was my mind was hurting me. Uh -huh. And it was hurting my body. So I had all of this suppression in me. And what was happening was the energy that it took to suppress my real true feelings was taken away from the energy that it took to run my body. Wow. So what happened was when I actually expressed myself, I no longer needed the energy to suppress those feelings. My, my body would then equally disperse the energy and I was cured. I had stage four cancer that metastasized and I was supposed to be dead, but now I'm you know, completely healed. Yeah. So it was out of necessity, Yeah. you know, for me to express myself. And I share my story with others so they don't have to get to the point that I went to, like literally facing my death. Yeah. And it's important for me now to share my story to the world so people don't get to that point. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't want anybody to have to endure the pain that I did, emotionally or physically. It's not fun. And you were doing chemo for... <clears throat> You did chemo and radiation for yeah. how long? Well, I did three cisplatin chemotherapy treatments, which is a seven hour process, which pretty much kills your immune system. So like, for example, if I heard anything, if I saw anything, or if somebody like tapped or anything, yeah, it was the yeah. worst pain. You can't conceptualize the pain. Oh my gosh. Um, and then I did 35 radiation treatments, which I had cancer in my throat because I wasn't expressing myself because my my throat chakra was blocked. It's blocking. So um, I had 35 radiation treatments, which took away my ability to speak, taste food, then eat food, drink water. Um, I had a feeding tube in my stomach for seven months. Um, that's how so I got So you couldn't all... eat, couldn't drink for seven months. Right, couldn't eat or drink for seven months. Um, I lost about 50 pounds, and yeah, I was pretty much ready to die. Um, and in fact, do they, do they tell you? Yeah, um, well, I was diagnosed in 2015, June. That's when I did the radiation and chemotherapy treatments. Um, I was in remission for about six months and then cancer came right back. And at that point, my doctor said, the cancer's in your bloodstream, you know, kind of be prepared to, you know, say your goodbyes. And that was tough. And at that point, I seeked alternative treatment, mm -hmm. and it worked. <laughs> um, it's alternative treatment in the form of medical marijuana. Uh -huh. um, what it basically did, it removed the inhibitors, the MAOI inhibitor on my stomach. They gave me access to my penile gland. Um, once that happened, <laughs> I had some amazing visions, and I got some memories that were suppressed in my mind that I had no idea were there. Wow. So, I mean, people... My, I, w I wanted to go to Tibet to meditate. Yeah. Because uh, that's where the biggest energy feels in, on the planet. But this medicine took me to a place that people that have been meditating for 50 years can't get to. So I, I mean, I feel like the divine touched me and told me, like, hey, this is what you need to do to heal uh -huh. or you die. Yeah. And telling my truth was literally the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, 
it caused a lot of people pain because I hurt a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and I apologize for that, but I mean, ultimately I was healed and, you know, now I'm spending the rest of my life, you know, telling people my story and, you know, hopefully preventing people, you know, from having to go through what I did. When you were doing the chemo and you had your doctors in PA and then you moved to California and relocated, so you isolated yourself in a way. Right. How did that help and influence your health and well-being? Patterns. Um, a lot of the stress that I had was due to my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I wanted to work, 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 work because I thought money would lead me to security and freedom. Mm -hmm. And it didn't. The pursuit of that money was in pursuit of material things so I can fit into certain social statuses that I thought would make me happy. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I got my degree. I worked my way from here to here to here to a, a really good position in corporate America. And, you know, I'm like, this didn't make me happy. You know, I, I, I mean, I was, you know, my low socioeconomic status grew up. I was so poor. We were the food bag, we were the soup kitchen. Um, and I had all this money now, and I still wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was a slave to my computer, my job. And I mean, I was doing meaningful work, but, you know, it, the stress was just too much. And I had to remove myself from those patterns. Um, because again, my cancer metastasized because I went right back in to that world. Yeah. And I had to remove myself completely from that world. Mm -hmm. And the beach is healing, the weather is healing. I was outside as opposed to being inside these walls and, mm -hmm. and I just began to heal. I mean, environment is everything. Like, you know, plants need to grow. They need sun, they need water. and. You know, just like we're people. Yeah. Nature is your battery pack. We are nature. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and these bodies, you know, we're water, you know, and... and we are the elements, you know. We are the elements, we have zinc, yes. iron, you know, we have these things in our body. And yeah. uh, we are just a different expression of consciousness of nature. So, mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, your old point is scary. <laughs> it's so scary, man. It's, so I, scary. it's not me. I'm just a vessel. <laughs> Dude, that's it. You know, that's I've, it. I've submitted. And that was a big part, too. I had an uh, ego. I, I thought, you know, I had to... Because, again, you know, being a black man in this society, you know, we come from... It was rough where I came from. And I couldn't show any signs of weakness or signs of vulnerability. And, you know, I, I thought that was strength. But the real strength is showing the vulnerability and showing yeah. that, you know, I'm afraid of this or I'm scared of that. And that's what led to my healing, you know, and, and my weaknesses became my strengths and I'm healed yeah. and I'm happy. I'm happier than I've ever been. Yeah. And I don't have nearly as much money as I've ever had, you know, but I don't care about that stuff anymore. Yeah. You have the experiences. Right. And my mind is free. And now. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's freedom and that's happiness. Health. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Now with you with isolation and removing yourself from environments or oh. lifestyles, how oh. have you experienced isolation? Well, uh pretty much uh my story is so identical to cows it's like scary mm. i grew up as an introvert i was very quiet growing up i would always get like a's in behavior my grades could suck but i always had a's <laughs> because i was so cool i was so quiet so um you know i was i was quiet my dad died when i was nine uh i dealt with a lot of depression um anxiety uh anger uh, because I was always, like I was explaining to you earlier, I was always so upset why my father, out of all the people mm. in the world, had a great life, you know, my brother, my mom, my dad, that's all we knew, you know, and when he died, it literally shifted my paradigm. Mm. What I thought was bad was actually good in hindsight, but, um, you know, that's when my gifts were revealed to me. It was sort of like an awakening. You know, it's, it's like, uh, you know, God took my father away from me, but he was like, you know, I'm going to take this away, but I'm going to give you this. So it was like mm. a fair exchange. And, you know, uh, when I started drawing, uh, all of my classmates, my teachers, they all noticed my artistic abilities. And they kind of just like, 
just ushered me in. Like, you mm. need to be in this class. So you need, and I kind of just uh, rode the wave or rode mm. the path where it was guiding me. And every time I surrendered or submitted, mm. that's when it just blows me right in the right spot. <laughs> so I literally just led my life or allowed my path to just, I just let the path create itself and I just walked it. Mm. Less. And one of my prayers is, uh, or my mantras is, God, if you walked away, I'll just follow behind your footsteps. Mm. But in, in regards to isolation, uh, isolation is where I go to retreat, to mm. go back to the source. Mm -hmm. That's where I go back to connect, where I go to pray, to uh, to just be alone, which I, I, fit, I look at it like this. This is the only way where you could discover yourself is yes. by being alone. Yes. Mm. The more you try to... Uh, uh, be amongst groups, parties, whatever, you will lose yourself. It's mm. so easy to get lost in that mm. because it's just too much, too much going on and it's so hard for you to focus on yourself. Yeah. So it is, it is very distracting. And that's a wrap for the day. It's your boy OP, the ones OP photography. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> Any closing remarks? I love you, whoever you are. <laughs> and you too. Noelle of noelleclark.com.